If you're a sunflower producer, we'll give you a few tips for success today. It really all starts with a good soil test. We want to make sure that you've got the right nutrients out on your field. And if you're looking for what nutrients do I need for sunflower production, you can find those on the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal App. Much like soybeans, I think sunflowers are very misunderstood when it comes to fertility. It's interesting to me as I travel around the country and I get to see how different farmers are doing things. Uh, I happened to be out in central South Dakota and I visited a couple different large farm operations. The first one that I went to has a very specific fertility program that he uses for sunflowers. And we looked at the stalks and the stalks were big, uh, mostly disease free. Uh, his plants stood very well until harvest and he had great big heads on his sunflowers. Visited another farmer about 100 miles away. Uh, so it was a little bit different growing conditions. But still, that farmer's philosophy was, you know what, sunflowers are a scavenger crop. We got out into his fields, and his sunflower stems were about as thick as one of his fingers, uh, which wasn't very thick. Uh, they weren't standing very well, and they had quite a bit of disease in them. And when we looked at, at what a plant tissue analysis looked like in his farm, we saw a lot of deficiencies out there. And it's amazing to me what a tremendous difference there was in fertility from one farmer to the next and what a difference that made in production. The farmer with great fertility in central South Dakota, ground that's not considered to be super highly productive, he was shooting for 3,000 pound flowers. The other farmer was shooting for 1,500 pound flowers, wondering how other guys were getting a ton. It, it made such a huge difference. So you think, I don't know if I can afford the fertility. Yeah, you can you could easily double your production over a period of years as you build up the fertility on your farm. I'll give you three quick nutrients to be thinking about that you may not have much before. Potassium is huge. If you've had any lodging problems in any crop, it's probably a potassium issue. Could also be manganese or copper. So those are all important if you're looking at sunflowers or really any crop when we're talking standability. All right, and then we think about the disease end of things. The successful farmers in sunflower production are using at least one shot of fungicides, and many times they're using two shots of fungicides. We're protecting against white mold, powdery mildew, and other diseases that can be very problemsome in sunflowers. But you mentioned white mold, that's whole different than most of the other foliar diseases. So what a lot of people are doing is running early with something like headline at a half rate, then they're going later on with Endura or Proline, whatever happens to be labeled in your area for white mold. Now we think about insect protection, and in sunflowers, there are several critical stages where we're going to see a lot of bug pressure it's just so important that you're out scouting on a timely basis in sunflowers. The best sunflower producers in the country are out at least weekly looking in their fields with sweep nets, uh, looking for what types of bugs are out there, and then spraying the appropriate products. The good news is the appropriate products are very inexpensive now. A lot of the pyrethroids are two bucks an acre for the full rate, so this isn't going to cost you much money. The other thing is a lot of people now are having their sunflowers treated with an insecticide. So if you've got a seed that's protected from bugs, you spray foliar once or twice for bugs. Generally speaking, you're in pretty good shape and you haven't even invested $10 an acre. All right, Brian, we get a little grief sometimes talking about our three pre-emerge strategy for soybeans and how critical it is to get good weed control in sunflowers, it's kind of the same thing. Well, it is kind of, but we only have two options. You've got a yellow and you've got Spartan. So you've got that PPO plus the yellow, either Prowl in no-till or Sonalan or Treflan in conventional till. Make sure you're using them both. If you decide, hey, I only want to use the yellow and I'm not going to use a Spartan this year. Or if you say, I'm only going to use Spartan, I don't think I really need the yellow. My advice to you is don't even think about planting sunflowers and I am not kidding you. Because here's the problem. Sunflowers don't give you very good crop canopy later on. We don't have any good foliar options for most weeds. So get the weeds under control pre. The biggest problem that we have is with a lot of these small seeded broadleaves. So don't think that the yellow is just there for grass. It's really good on the small seeded broadleaves, especially if you keep the rate up. As long as you do that, then hey, I'm in pretty good shape. Since I've got the PPO and the yellow down, now I'm gonna follow post-emerge with a grass killer because we've got $2 an acre, or $3 an acre grass post-emerge options. So that's very inexpensive if you need to rescue for grass. We just don't have any good rescue options for broadleaves. Now, even the herbicide tolerant sunflowers, where where you've got either uh, clear field flowers or you have Express Sun, 
Uh, you just don't have great weed control options there. If you've nope. got kochia and some of these tough ALS resistant weeds, uh, it, it's very difficult to get post-emerge weed control in sunflowers. Again, that's why the pre's are so critical. All right, well, once again, there are many things you can do if you want more tonnage on your farm. And I know we've thrown a lot of things out and you might say, well, I'm in a really dry area and I can't afford this. We just encourage you to try some of these things and try them over a period of years because what you're going to find is if you properly feed your crop and if you protect it from weeds, insects, and diseases, you're going to have a lot more yield down the road in sunflowers and any crop. And one of the ways to get great yields is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show.